Hello, I'm Eric Sean. Down time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Arthel Neville. Welcome. Joining us is Dr. David Samadi, Chairman and Professor of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and Chief of Robotic Surgery. And as always, Dr. Mark Siegel, Professor of Medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center, also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Hello, Dr. Doc. Good to Good see, you. see you. Good to see you. Both. Let's get right to it because March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. First, some eye-opening facts about the disease. According to the CDC, colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. 140,000 Americans are diagnosed with colorectal cancer every year. More than 90% of colorectal cancers occur in people age 50 or older. Dr. Samadhi, so many questions. Uh, we could start with the risk factors. How do you reduce the risk? Um, do you have to get a colonoscopy? Those are very good questions. So as you mentioned, 140,000 colorectal cancers a, a year and 50,000 ourselves still die from this. People don't need to die from colon cancer because it's a preventable and treatable if you really go for screening. Right now the recommendation is to get screening over the age of 50. We'll talk about who is at high risk and who should be doing more screening or not. Now, is, screening, is screening actually the colonoscopy? Colonoscopy. That and is the it, screening? And that's right. And, and, and it reduces the risk of death by 60%. So who are some of the people at risk? If you're consuming a lot of fatty food, red meat, you're not consuming a lot of fruits and vegetables, you have family history, obesity, or if you have any kind of inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis, you're at higher risk. Now, why is screening important? Because a lot of times when you find these changes in the lining of the colon, about six feet of colon, they are called, we find them polyps, they call them early stage, and then when you remove these polyps, you can cure somebody. If you leave them alone and don't find them, they can become a bigger mass, and what happens is it can grow into the lumen of colon, so what happens is if you see changes in your bowel habit, that's how you know you may have colon cancer. Unintended weight loss, you see blood in stool, you're losing blood without knowing, you become anemic, you're fatigued, that's when you, re or very narrow stool. Those are very important signs you need to pay attention and go for the doctor and get screened. That's how we can save your life. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Siegel, I, I've said this before in this program, my father died of uh, colon cancer, didn't have a colonoscopy. It's a, a tragedy, sadness in our family. He had some of those symptoms. So what would you say to a patient who came in with those symptoms in your office? Well, first of all, Eric, you don't even have to have those symptoms. If you're over the age of 50, you may have no symptoms at all. But as Arthel said at the beginning, 90% of colon cancer is over the age of 50. So that's why we use 50 as our target starting point. With those symptoms, change in bowel habits that David said, yes, a colonoscopy right away, even without those symptoms, even without blood in the stool, even without weight loss, even without change in bowel habits, especially with a family history, someone in your family that had colon cancer or even polyps, because 35 to 40 percent of adults have polyps. Which, what are a polyp? Polyp is, a, is an outpocketing of the colon. It's not cancer, but 25 percent of the time, a certain kind of polyp, the most common kind, develops into cancer. You know how long it takes, Eric? Seven or eight years. That's why we want to find the Early polyp. Protection. And that puts you into a group, Arthel. If you have the polyps, we got to screen you more often. What, do they slip them off? You well, snip them off unless they're big or they're invading in the wall. Then you have to do more of a procedure. But you snip them off most of the time, you're done. But then I might say colonoscopy two or three years, maybe one year. You change your screening procedure. Okay. Now, you, you, you ask about screening. I want to say one more thing about screening. Colon c cancer, we generally use colonoscopy. And I agree with David, but there is something called a virtual colonoscopy out there that a lot of people ask about. The prep is the same. As for regular colonoscopy, the regular colonoscopy is better. For people that are very afraid of that scope or can't have that scope, a virtual where they literally do it radiographically in a radiologist's office is a possibility for screening. I like hey, the Dr. colonoscopy. Hey, Dr. Samadhi, okay, because you're the, the guy who does all this kinds of stuff. And so do you, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Mark, as well. But I want to ask you particularly, Dr. Samadhi, look, I'm anti-colonoscopy, right? I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you you shouldn't get it. <laughs> I don't like them. So what about this virtual screening that Dr. Mark is saying? Does it work? Will it detect if I have polyps? You know something, Arthur? i got to individualize the care. So I will sit with you and I would say what kind of diet you have and what you eat, and we can change some of your diets. But if you're at the low risk, 
risk of, of getting colon cancer and you absolutely don't want to go through this invasive procedure or get your colonoscopy done, something called Cologuard. And Cologuard is a DNA stool test. You can do it at home. And it, guess what? 92% accurate. And if it turns out that it's positive, that's when you should go for your colonoscopy. You don't have a choice at that time. That's very important. I will also ask about your family history. 3% of colon cancer out there is a part of the syndrome, very aggressive one, called Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome is the families that get colon cancer early age. In 20 or 25 year old, they may get endometrial or ovarian cancers. Those guys need colonoscopy at the age of 20 and that there are a lot of genetic tests that you can see this. So what is my take home message to a lot of people out there? Cut down on fatty food. Right. Get rid of red meat. If you want to have red meat, maybe three to four times a month. Lose weight and add a lot of anti-inflammation. I know you're a big fan of it. Turmeric, garlic, green tea, etc. And check your vitamin D because low vitamin D also can increase your risk of colon cancer. But Dr. Mark, finally, Cologuard, does that work? Is well, it accurate? Do you, do you agree? I think Cologuard is something that's been studied and it's a new kid on the block. I do not think it takes the place of colonoscopies or even, even checking for blood. I think it's something that we could use as, as an adjunct. But what I think people really need to do is to stop smoking, stop drinking alcohol, have a high fiber diet, lose weight, as David <laughs> said, get screened, yeah. increase your exercise. Exactly. All of this. No fun. All of this. Don't stop well, but fun. all of this actually. You know, I, by the way, by the way, one more thing. And David wanted me to mention this. There's a new study out. And it's not proof, but it shows that you decrease your risk of colon cancer, likely that you decrease it greatly over the age of 50 if you have an aspirin a day. Mm. Now, I am not telling people to have an aspirin a day as a result of this study, but it decreases the, it increases the chances I may give you one. I'm already thinking heart disease, stroke. I know it can increase your risk of bleeding. I debate this, but now I'm thinking it may help decrease the Where risk of Where do I get the Cologuard? So Where you do can, I pick you it up? You can actually go to your doctor. You can order it. You, it comes to you, and it's about $500. Only through the doctor. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go so fast. Only through the doctor? <laughs> Or you can, I, it's online also. I uh -huh. will put it on our personal uh, okay. Facebook. But I think what Mark is trying to tell you is, and he's 100% right, he wants to push for colonoscopy because that saves mm -hmm. lives. And he doesn't want people to know that aspirin is a replacement for colonoscopy or necessarily this Cologuard. You should go for colonoscopy. If you happen to be phobic and you don't want to have that procedure, I think you agree with this, that it's better to get this done. Better than nothing. Ignore Absolutely better than nothing. That's, that's, All right. By the well, way, then you, do the, you do the Color Guard, and I'm, a, I'm on my three years. I, you I should go, go for three three years. Years. I've never it's, had one it's, yet. Uh, it, you know, and, the, and the prep, it's not that bad like it used to be. It it's to be really, really important. Bad. You used to be like, I don't want to talk but about Eric, it. The people who benefited the most, by the way, by taking that aspirin of the day, yeah were the ones that hadn't had a colonoscopy. And that just points out, colonoscopy is doing some of this work for you. It's screening your colon. It's saying you have a polyp. It's getting the polyp out before it turns All to right, cancer. Well, All right, I'm lying then I'll the, take aspirin. I'm lying on the table. I'll think of you guys. All right.